Hello everyone, my name is Jack and this is Homebrew Heroes where I share with you all some homebrew content for the game Dungeons and Dragons. Today I'll quickly go over the newly released Artificer Guide that just came out on May 14th, 2019, which was just a few days ago. This is the second version of the revised Artificer, and I think it's safe to say that nobody saw this coming at all. I won't be doing a total overview of the class, since it's the same as the previous revision, but this time it just has some new stuff in it such as new subclasses and infusions. If you want to see my class overview of the revised Artificer, or if you want to see the newest version of it for yourself, the links to those can be found in the description below. With that said, let's begin. The Revised Artificer has gained some new subclasses, spells, and infusions in this new draft. Starting with the spells, they've added 16 new spells for the Artificer to learn. These spells come from Xanthar's Guide to Everything, and they bring the total number of Artificer spells from 72 to 88 spells. Officially, there are 19 cantrips, 17 first level spells, 20 second level spells, 14 third level spells, 11 fourth level spells, and 7 fifth level spells. The spells that were listed in yellow are the new spells that were just added. Three new infusions have also been added as well, bringing the total amount of infusions from 8 to 11. Enchanted Wand is a modified wand that grants the wielder a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls, and it can ignore half cover when making an attack. The bonus increases to plus two at level 12. Repeating Shot is an infusion for weapons that have the ammunition property. It grants a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls and ignores the loading and ammunition properties, letting you rapid fire magic bolts from your weapon. Propulsion Shield grants a shield a plus one bonus to AC and a special reaction option. Whenever a creature hits you, you can use your reaction to push the creature 15 feet away from you. I also want to correct my previous video about infusions. I wrote down that you'll learn two infusions at level two, but in actuality, you'll learn three infusions at level two. That's bad on me, but hey, now you get to play with more infusions early on. Everybody wins! Except for me, because I've made an error. The last two additions are two new subclasses for the Artificer. The Archivist and the Gunsmith. I mean the Battlesmith. That's what I meant to say. There's no such thing as the Gunsmith. Not anymore. My dreams are dead. The first new subclass is the Archivist. These are artificers that act as keepers of knowledge and information. They have a talent for bringing items to life, to serve them and to store information into them. At level 3, you'll gain the Tools of the Trade feature. You'll gain proficiency in calligrapher supplies and the forgery kit, and you'll have an easier time crafting items in the scroll category. The Archivist also gains some new spells to learn, like Comprehend Languages, Locate Object, Tongues, Locate Creature, and Modify Memory. You also gain the Artificial Mind at level 3. After completing a long rest, you can use your calligrapher's tools to rouse the mind within a tiny, non-magical object. This then becomes a magical item and you can use it as a spellcasting focus. This Artificial Mind also grants you proficiency in two skills that it knows while it's with you. The skills that it knows depends on the main material of the item. For example, if the Artificial Mind is made out of animal material, like parchment or leather, the two skills that it could teach you are either Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Perception, or Survival. But wait, there's more! It has an ability called Manifest Mind. As a bonus action, you can create a spectral form of your item, allowing it to move around for up to 300 feet. You can see, hear, and cast spells through the item, and phase through objects, giving you a unique scouting item at your disposal. You and your artificial mind also gain a new attack option called Information Overload. If either of you are within 5 feet of a creature, you can overload their thoughts, distracting them and dealing 1d8 psychic damage. This damage scales as you level up, and you can use your spell slots to increase the damage. If you use this at level 17 and spend the 5th level spell slot, you can deal a whopping 10d8 of psychic damage. The next feature is Mind Network at level 6. With this, you'll gain two new abilities for you and your artificial mind. Magical Telephony lets you use your artificial mind to communicate telepathically with anyone that has an infused item. This is a two-way call, letting you speak to an ally anywhere in the world, even from beyond different planes. 
A psychic damage lets you add your intelligence modifier to your information overload damage roll, or to any spells that deal psychic damage. The final feature is pure information. Just like Mind Network, you'll gain two new abilities to play with. Mind Overload modifies your information overload ability, letting you stun creatures whenever you use it. Infoportation lets you teleport to either your artificial mind's location or to an infused item. You can do this for free once per rest, then you'll have to spend a second level spell slot or higher to teleport this way again. Just like the Alchemist subclass, this is another utility subclass for the Artificer. Although the Artificial Mind is my favorite companion so far, most of the features rely on that, information overload, or your infused items. It only has one feature about actual information gathering, which I thought was the main purpose of the Archivist. I love it, but I'm curious to see what everyone has to say about it and if they're going to change anything about it. Battlesmiths are artificers that excel at defending and repairing materials and allies. They are known to bringing an iron defender with them into battle, which can be used to save lives and fight against their foes. Battlesmiths gain 4 features at level 3, starting with their tools of the trade. They gain proficiency in leather workers and smiths tools, and they have an easier time crafting items in the armor category. The Battlesmith will also gain their own spells to cast, like Searing Smite, Warding Bond, Aura of Vitality, Staggering Smite, and Mass Cure Wounds. The next feature is Battle Ready. Your combat training has granted you two abilities. You'll gain proficiency in martial weapons, giving you access to weapons like the Great Sword, the Rapier, and the Blowgun, the best gun. You can also use your Intelligence modifier for your Magic Weapon Attack and Damage rolls instead of Strength and Dexterity. You'll gain your Iron Defender Companion at level 3. The Iron Defender is a medium-sized, four-legged companion that is friendly to you and your allies. It comes with its own stat sheet, complete with resistances and actions. During combat, it acts exactly the same as the Alchemist Humunculus. It goes right after you during combat, and can only take the dodge action unless you command it to do a special action as your bonus action. It can bite creatures, repair constructs and objects, and it has a special reaction called Defensive Pounce. This reaction lets your Iron Defender impose disadvantage against a creature's attack roll on another creature if they are within 5 feet of it. It's similar to the Mechanical Servant that the original Artificer had, but it feels more fleshed out here and it states that you can create ANY 4-legged creature, not just a beast with a challenge rating of 2 or lower. At level 6 you'll gain the feature Arcane Jolt. This makes your Iron Defender's bite attack count as magical and you two get to gain one of two bonuses when either of you hit a target. You can either deal an additional 2d4 force damage, or you get to heal a creature within 30 feet of the target by 2d4 hit points. The last feature is Improved Defender. This boosts your Arcane Jolt's damage and healing dice from 2d4 to 4d4, which is a nice improvement. Also, whenever your defender uses their Defensive Pounce reaction, the target gains disadvantage on their attack and they suffer force damage equal to 2d4 plus your intelligence modifier. The Battlesmith is a good mix of healing and combat features. It may not have the best late game features, but you'll be combat ready with your best four legged terror around for any conflict. And with that, that was the new additions to the revised Artificer class. Let me know in the comments if your thoughts on these changes. Are they useful? What changes would you recommend? Anything like that. Also, let me know of other homebrew you'd like me to go over in the comments below as well. The links to the revised Artificer can be found in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe for more homebrew content and other things informational. Till next time, bye.